Welcome into Ludi's Look Back. My name is Nick Luttrell. If you've scoured your way through the internet or YouTube or THV 11 plus and you're looking at this video now, don't worry, you're in the right place if you want to hear about sports and what happened in the past weekend within the state of Arkansas. We've got a packed show for you all today, probably the most packed show we've ever had in our six episode history of Ludi's Look Back. We'll talk the Hogs' impressive football win over Mississippi State. We'll also talk the men's basketball team. They looked real strong in just an exhibition game, but an impressive win against Kansas. We'll of course touch on some other college football scores around the state with Arkansas State, UCA, UAPB, and then of course the GAC. We'll get to some high school action as well. Have the sweetest play and round it out with some golf. You heard that right, golf. We'll talk about that later in the show. But right now, we'll start today's show how we always do with my three big things. You can see it behind me. The first one, let's talk about this Arkansas football team as we always do to begin the show. And let's first talk about their big win against Mississippi State 58 to 25. Offense was clicking on all cylinders. Taylor Green, the Arkansas quarterback, the hand-picked quarterback from Bobby Petrino. We've seen good Taylor, we've seen bad Taylor, and Taylor was elite on Saturday afternoon against the Bulldogs. 23 of 29 passing 314 passing yards, six total touchdowns. I think he had 70 over 70 rushing yards as well. Had a rushing touchdown, which you guys, if you haven't seen it already, go back and watch Hog Zone. It's an impressive, impressive run. It made our play of the day out juke the defender and made his way around the end around the uh, the defender for the touchdown. He, like I said, he had six total touchdowns. He played really good and it's awesome to see Green playing so well, especially after he he's been out for a little. I guess he wasn't I guess he wasn't out, but he did have that injury um, when he didn't play towards the end of that game for Tennessee. You were a little worried in the LSU game. He didn't play to his full potential against the Tigers, and this was the potential we saw on Saturday afternoon. He had a heck of a game, so well done to Taylor Green, and also well done to the offensive line, and that's my next point. They, pl they played bully ball. They looked like what they the, the offensive line that we expected them to to uh, to be at after watching the Oklahoma State game. You go back and look at the Oklahoma State game, the first half, I should say, because those are two different games. The first half, the offensive line was destroying the defensive line of Oklahoma State. And on Saturday afternoon, the O-line of Arkansas was doing what they what they should have done against the defensive line of Mississippi State. Look, this is a, a Bulldogs defense that is about, I think, last in nearly every statistical category as far as defense goes. So the Arkansas offense did what they needed to do and especially did it with that offensive line especially helped out with Patrick Kudis having him back in the lineup was really helpful with some more depth on that offensive line and they looked really good so good to see that group is doing well right now the third point that I have of my three big things was the defense was just good not great look I know if you look at the stats they forced five turnovers and round of applause five turnovers five turnovers that's really impressive but if you really watch this game, it should have been like, okay, the final score is 58 to 25. There sh it should have been probably 58 to 45, honestly, because there were multiple times Mississippi State was right there at the goal line and had one or two turnovers or a, uh, a call, in my opinion, that probably should have been ended up being a turnover at the goal line. Uh, I think that was early on in the first quarter or second quarter. Mississippi State probably should have been awarded that touchdown. Nonetheless, they don't get it. A call actually goes Arkansas's way, which I'm, I'm sure fans pretty much appreciate from the SEC officials. And then the defense get that, gets that big, big defensive stop. But other than them, you know, having those turnovers, and you, you notice behind me, I didn't write forced five turnovers. I don't want to say the word forced, forced five turnovers or caused five turnovers because a lot of the time Mississippi State kind of just said, hey, here's the ball, take it. And that's what happened in this game. But our, what Arkansas needed to do to win, they did. And that was making less mistakes than Mississippi State. And that's exactly what they did on Saturday afternoon in a big time win. Those are my thoughts. Let's hear from the head hawk himself, Sam Pittman, after the game. The game, a lot of times, is about matchups, you know, and so you look at it and you go, okay, so-and-so beat so-and-so by this many points. So we ought to be able – doesn't work that way. It's, it's, it's how you match up with people. Our offensive line matched up extremely well with their defensive line, and uh, we thought that was going to be a major advantage for, for us, and it, it turned out that it was. You know, we talk all the time about turnovers, playing smart, and make somebody else try to catch us with effort. I really felt like we won all three of those today. 
we just had a hard time without the turnovers and we've got to get a lot better. And I think it's a lot about leverage. We lost contain, we lost contain on bubbles and we, we didn't tackle well. We got a whole group of defensive guys that want to play a lot better than what we did, but we'll take those turnovers and, and we'll look forward to next week. But our guys, they're well coached. They're great kids. Uh, we just didn't quite tackle as good or keep leverage like we, we, we normally do. I think there's a family feel to that, and it's like us against everybody. It's really cool. It's really neat. Our kids believe in that, and I think that's why they play. Had us play for each other, play for who's there. And our fans that were here today were really cool because there's the only ones left there at the end, so it was fun. I like it. It's a little, little subtle jab there from Sam Pittman to the Mississippi State fans because, you know, Obviously, there weren't much of them left because Arkansas was dominating this game. Only Arkansas fans left in this one at the very end. So that's that's pretty cool to see. I could hear a hog call watching on TV. That's always fun to see. You go to the away team's row environment, the clanking uh, cowbells, and you do a hog call, and that's pretty special. So I thought, I thought that was cool. To give context for that last answer, he was asked about why do they do so well. So, you know, in the Sam Pittman era, they've played better on the road at times than they do at home, and he was asked why. And he kind of just feels like basically what he said, you know, he's got the team has the chip on their shoulder. You know, they they feel like, you know, people aren't, you know, focused on them as much. They got that chip on their shoulders to go out and make big plays. And that's what they've done in the Sam Pittman era. They've won on the road and it's it's really impressive. I mean, OK, they want to get to Mississippi State and Auburn, two of the bottom feeders in the SEC right now. But win on the road in the SEC, that should still be something that I think is respectable in my mind and I think should be applauded of this Arkansas football team. A couple more things. We talked about the rushing game, talked about the offensive line. Look, the offense puts up 58 points. You're going to be awarded for that. I didn't get a chance to talk about Braylon Russell, the guy who was playing high school football last year, 250 pounds, had 175 rushing yards, had a big play there towards the end of the game, about a 75 yard rush that ended up getting him over 100 yards and giving him all of those rushing yards. He had a really good game. Also, Rashad Dominion, give credit to him because he had a costly fumble against LSU. He bounced right back and he had a really good game. He looked really good. This is a guy who's been with the program for, I don't know, three or four years, it feels like. That's a long time now in college athletics. Rashad Dominion, he played good against Mississippi State, and I think that's also something that we should mention and should be awarded of him because he's kind of been He's like the fourth string running back now, and that's probably hard when you've been with the program for so long. You should feel like you'd be the first string, but give credit to him and what he was able to do on Saturday against Mississippi State. And also back to the uh, talking about the offense, Taylor Green, he's able to find more guys than just Andrew Armstrong. I have no problem with him throwing to Andrew Armstrong and looking for him a lot like he's done throughout the season. Andrew's been his go-to guy. But Taylor Green, he found Jordan Anthony for a touchdown. He found, found Luke has. He found the tight ends. The tight ends got involved. They had four out of the five touchdown passes that Taylor Green threw. So that was that was that was really impressive to to, to see Taylor Green spread the ball, spread the love to not just Andrew Armstrong, but all of his his weapons, Isaac Tesla, I, um, Isaiah Satania. I mean, the list goes on. A Broden of guys he was able to find in this game. So really positive look from both the offense and the defensive side of the ball. Special teams look good as well. We didn't quite see them. They didn't need to be used quite as much um, in this game. But look, that's football. Let's move on now to Arkansas men's basketball. They hosted an exhibition game against Kansas, and oh yeah, they won 50 or 85 to 69. Look, there's a Jayhawks team that in the preseason AP, AP top 25, the number one team in the country. So Arkansas beat the number one team in the country. Shouldn't everyone be doing, you know, backflips and celebrating and all this fun stuff. Well, you know, Coach Cal doesn't exactly think so, and we'll get to him later. But a couple notes I do have. DJ Wagner and Boogie Fland, man, were they good. They combined for, uh, I have it written down somewhere on here. I thought I thought I had it down, written down. Yeah, 46 points. They combined for 46 points in this one. They were both re really special. I talked about Boogie Fland a few weeks ago when we got to see him in person a few weeks ago at their tip-off event, and man, he's flashy and he is really special, so it's good to see him doing well. Big Z was also cooking as well. A really good passer for being 7-2. He's 7-2, and he can pass the ball like a guard. I mean, obviously, he has a height advantage versus everyone else, so he can kind of drop it over everyone's head, but 
he looked really special, and so that was fun to see Big Z doing as well, um, doing really good as well. The only negative, I mean, there's a few negatives to look at. The first one that I took note of, at least, is three-point shooting, just six of 24 from beyond the arc. You know, it's it's your first game. It's just an exhibition game, so they're not going to put too much stock into this. Just like since they won big, I don't want to put too much stock into it as well and do backflips and all those fun things. And another thing to note, like Kansas did have a couple guys out, including their preseason All-American. Uh, Hunter Dickinson, who is the guy who is also 7 2, would be matching with Big Z and playing against him. So it would have been a completely different game when you have Hunter Dickinson in the game. And obviously, Kansas didn't, and that led to Arkansas getting the win. I think if you, you know, if Dickinson would have played, Arkansas also had um, Jonas Adu out, the transfer from Tennessee. So just an exhibition game, nothing to put too much stock in, but some positives and some negatives to look at for this one. And of course, new head coach John Calipari, he uh, he made sure to tell folks that, uh, you know, they did well and also give credit to, to his new team, but also, you know, uh, not get too hyped up about this new team, let's say. Look, they had two of their better players out. So let's know, let's not do like triple backflips. I mean, but what I liked was we really guarded the ball pretty good. Did we look like we really tried to play hard and defend? We've only been together a short time, so I'm happy because I wanted people to leave and say that was fun to watch. Missed so many threes. What if we had made three or four more threes? Now you're playing defense. You're creating fouls the way we play, a downhill running team. But I'm, I'm glad um, we were able to look somewhat organized and look like we played hard and seemed as though the kids had fun. I want them to enjoy playing. The fans, unbelievable crowd. Folks, it was an exhibition game. Now, the money went to charity. So you have Children's Hospital here. We did a, uh, a thing for Care Source at Springdale High School today, Pack Gym, all about mental health. And our kids were there and it, that's the kind of stuff I like where we're getting into communities, adding value. Uh, the program is more than just about playing basketball. It's about doing things to add value to our state. Really like that out of, out of Coach Cal, doing things that, 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 that can add value other than just playing basketball. I think that's something that's obviously really important to note. And I'm going to say this every time we hear from Coach Cal on this show for probably the next year, if this show continues to go that long, it is just weird and uncomfortable seeing him in a Razorback red pullover. It should, it, I, it's still taking a little bit to get used to always seeing him in that Kentucky blue and now he's wearing Razorback red and he wants to do things for the state. Part of me is like, you don't care about the state, you care about Kentucky. But at the same time, he's John Calipari and I, I, I got a feeling he's going to bring something very special, maybe a national championship, maybe a Sweet 16, maybe a Final Four. I don't know what's going to happen. But it's Coach Cal, and the expectations are, are really high for this Razorback basketball team, and they should be. They have a really good team, and they have Coach Cal leading the way. So I think those are really important things to know. All right, we talked about Arkansas Razorbacks football and basketball. Let's go back to football now. Arkansas State, though, the Red Wolves surviving against a, not a great team in Troy, 34 31 in this one, the Red Wolves getting the win. They played good most of the game, three out of the four quarters. They played good. They were up by, I think, two or three touchdowns in the second half, and that's when Troy, they allowed kind of Troy to come back in this game. And Arkansas State actually trailed with a few minutes left to go, but give credit to them. They had a big uh, two-minute, two you know, uh, two-minute drive where they, they ran down the field and they got a touchdown when they needed it. So I think it shows resilience that they're able to do that, and that's impressive. Uh, Jalen Rayner, their quarterback, almost threw for 400 yards, 349 to be exact. Corey Rucker, his go-to guy, he's been really special to watch this season, had 193 receiving yards. Did I write that down right? 100, yeah, 193 receiving yards. That's crazy, only on 12 receptions. So very impressive from Corey Rucker. Again, he's been Rayner's go-to guy this year. And then Zach Wallace rushing the ball, had three rushing touchdowns, including the game winner. So again, Arkansas State, maybe not the prettiest win, but definitely got a win. And they are one game away from being bowl eligible. And here is head coach Butch Jones after the win. And I hope people understand how far we've come. And we still have a long ways to go. But the grit, the determination, the will to win, the will to prepare, 
with this football team. Um, I love coaching them, and uh, we just find ways to win. In the first half, I thought uh, it was our best half of football that we've played as a team. You know, uh, piggyback with the second half at Southern Miss, and uh, I knew that they were going to make a run at us. And everything in football is about momentum. And they came out, and to their credit, they established the momentum. When you really look at it, it was, a, it was really, we played three quarters of winning football and one bad quarter of about bad football, as, as bad as we can play. Um, I believe they scored on three drives. You know, we turned the football over. We had three and outs. You can't do that. You know, we had matched their scores prior to that. Um, but again, to our credit, uh, winning is hard. It's very fragile, and uh, I just can't say enough. All right, so Red Wolves getting the win. Again, one more, one more win until they can be a bowl-eligible team, so that is really exciting. Let's move on to the FCS ranks number 10, UCA, barely hanging on to beat North Alabama 24-19. I'll be honest, when I first looked at this, I was like, uh, shouldn't they beat North Alabama by, you know, more points than five? And they were up by a little bit more. I think North Alabama scored a, um, a, a, t a touchdown late that didn't really end up mattering because they failed on the two point conversion. But then I remembered and of course heard from Nathan Brown, who enlightened me to let me know that North Alabama did beat Abilene Christian last week. Of course, Abilene Christian, a top 25 team in the FCS ranks. I think that's the team that beat UCA along with a state. That's UCA's only two losses, Abilene Christian and our Arkansas State. So this is a good North Alabama team. They're coming off a big upset win. They're getting really hyped up. UCA coming off a bye week. So you expect it maybe a little bit more, but nonetheless got a win. And, you know, um, they, they got a good one at that. Um, normally I talk about offense. I talk about Shandarek Powell, talk about Will McElvain, and they have a lot of great offensive weapons because I just love talking about Shandarek Powell and he's that good. But the defensive side doesn't get enough credit, and I wish I could talk about them more. And today I kind of get to for at least a few seconds because the defense did force five turnovers looking at like that Arkansas defense five big time turnovers that really ended up keeping them in the game and helping them to win the game TD Williams had two interceptions on the day David Walker is, is so impressive this guy is going to be playing NFL football I don't can't remember if he's a senior or a junior but he's going to be playing NFL football very very soon Walker had a, um, a fumble a punched the ball out scooped up the fumble hurdled a guy it was like a 10 yard return but it was so impressive. David Walker is is that guy. He is really special on the defensive end. I know Nathan Brown is certainly happy to have him for the UCA Bears. And speaking of Nathan Brown, here is what he had to say after their win. First of all, uh, you know, excited excited about the win. Um, bottom lines, a win's a win's a win. I mean, and uh, we knew we were playing a team coming off of a top ten win against Abilene last time they were out and, won, and winners of three straight. So obviously playing a, a, a team that, that has some momentum and, and uh, playing at a high, high level right now. Um, so we knew we were going to get their best shot and, and they were, you know, obviously three and one in the conference. So they, they had a lot to play for. And so we knew this was going to be a tough game um, for us coming out of the bye week. Um, you know, it's the same, same situation. You feel like you, you, you rested up, you got a little healthier and all those things but you still lose routine. And so um, it was good to get back in a routine on a Saturday and a weekend and, and get this thing going with four weeks left in the season. So um, proud of our guys. I mean, I was proud of our defense. I thought our defense played lights out all night. Um, I thought we made just enough big explosive plays on offense um, to, to, to help, us, um, help us get through this game. Obviously the plus five on the turnover margin might be the difference in the game, obviously. Um, that's that's a huge uh, a huge gain of, of field position and obviously momentum and, and all that. So um, you know I can look uh, you know I can look at the film tomorrow or tonight and tell you a million different things that we probably have to get better at and probably didn't do good enough at and um, all those things. But we did enough to beat North Alabama tonight and that's what we're excited about. 
All right, running a little low on time, so let's get to our next football score. UAPB got their third win of the season, 35-21, granted over a winless Mississippi Valley State team, but nonetheless a two-touchdown win for UAPB. That could have been more. This is a close game at halftime. The Golden Lions, you know, pulled ahead in the second half to get this win. Again, their third win of the season. That's special for a Golden Lions program that certainly struggled as of late. Makai Hagens had another good day, over 200 yards passing for total touchdowns. I think at least one or two of those were rushing touchdowns as well. His guy, his go to guy on the receiving end, Giovanni Gibson, another 100 yard receiving yard receiving game for him as well as the touchdown. So Golden Lions get the win and we're here from a lot of head coaches in today's show. Let's hear from Alonzo Hampton about what he said that that changed in the second half for his team. Oh man, the weather. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we, it was a beautiful day all day and, and I checked that weather all week. Man, I don't know what happened. It just came out of nowhere. But God was shining down on us. He sent us back in and said, y'all ain't, ain't focused. Get y'all tail off this field. And so we had to go back to the locker room and we had a chance to make some corrections, talk to our players, talk about being fearless, okay? Talk about being focused. And then we talked about being fired up. And so what you saw in the fourth quarter is you saw that mentality. They would come back around. This football team is starting to grow. And I think the people in this community start to feel that we got something special brewing. We got to continue to work. I always love hearing from Alonzo Hampton. I, I, he just makes me want to want to run through a brick wall every time I hear from him. Love that guy. Love that head coach. And nice win for UAPB. All right, Division Two ranks now. GAC scoreboard time. Henderson State getting the win 42 to 7 over Arkansas Monticello. Good bounce back win for them after losing last week and bouncing out of the top 25. Bottom left corner of your screen. Harding speaking of bounce back wins, getting the nice win 49 17 over SAU. And uh, SAU is, I think, number 22. Or in, they're, they're definitely in the top 25 in the Division II rank, so I apologize for not putting their ranking uh, on there because they are a good team and Harding stomped them like they've stomped a lot of teams this season, except for the next team I'm going to talk about in the top right corner of your screen, OBU continuing its uh, domination of the GAC and of all teams. They stay undefeated with a 38-7 win over Arkansas Tech and Southeastern Oklahoma State getting the 30-15 win over Southwestern Oklahoma State. I'll be honest, this graphic only I, there, there there could only be there had to be four scores on this graphic. There's only three Arkansas teams that faced off, so I thought, why not? You know, a Southeastern versus Southwestern Oklahoma State game. What a great game, I'm sure that was, but I'm guessing not many of you care about that. We probably care about more is the high school ranks. And week eight of high school football had a lot to offer, as it always does in the state of Arkansas. Let's go quickly through these scores. Conway getting the big win over Pulaski Academy, 32 to 12, holding the PA offense to just just 12 points is is impressive. I can't remember the exact stat. But man, that's it's been a while since I've seen the Bruins only put up 12 points. North Little Rock losing to Little Rock Central. The Charging Wildcats still winless on the season. And give credit to the Tigers, their second win on the season. You think maybe that doesn't mean that much to them. That probably means a lot because this was a team that was winless each of the past three seasons. This year, they now have two wins over Roger Heritage and North Little Rock. Bitten, stomping Catholic. That was our game of the week, 42 to nothing. Not only did the offense click, but the defense didn't allow a single point against a good quarterback in Jackson, England, and the Rockets. Cersei, I, I, I messed up that score there, but that's, that, that's actually flipped. Joe T. Robinson got the win over Cersei, 49 to 14 and a good win for the Robinson Senators. They continue to click in the 5A Central and they have full command of the 5A Central. Well, they got two games left, but will probably be conference champions in that conference. Okay, let's go to the top right corner of the screen. No, this isn't a basketball score. This is a football score. Farmington getting the win over Moralton 78 to 75 and that now now I'm double checking myself because I can't remember if I flipped that score too because I messed up the Cersei Joe T Robinson score I might have messed up this one but no doubt about it this was a crazy offensive explosive game Moralton's quarterback had 11 touchdown passes in this game he passed for 746 yards that's not that's a real stat. I didn't mess that one up. I promise you guys. Almost 800 yards passing in one 
game is insane. So I guess give credit to Maddox Berry and the Moralton offense, but you know, it would have been nice to see some defense and you know, no big deal. All right, the big upset in the 3A ranks from Friday night. Prescott losing to Bismarck. Bismarck pulling the upset 33 to 29. That shakes up a few things in the class 3A. But speaking of 3A, Fordyce continues to roll over Dumas with a nice, nice win, a shutout win, 48 to nothing. And then Carlisle continuing to be the favorites in the 2A, 55 to 8 over Bearden. Okay, those are some sweet scores. You know what it's time for? It is time for our sweet plates. Yarnell's sweetest play of the week, and let's check him out. Nomination number one, Mills quarterback Eli Moody. This guy is fantastic. Look, this didn't end up being a touchdown run, but it was a pretty impressive run. 20, 30 yards, I don't know how far it was, all the way inside the goal line. But look at the offensive lineman with the big time block. You're gonna have to remember his name, Nick Carter, with a monster pancake block. Puts the guy on his behind and sets up a nice play for the Comets. All right, let's check out nomination number two, Cersei and Robinson. As I mentioned, Robinson was the one who got the big win. And this is a big momentum shift play here, too. The Lions quarterback, Johnny Bell, was airing out to his receiver. Check out this one more time. Ball pops right off the right shoulder pad of the Lions' intended receiver. And guess who? It is Deuce Williams. He had a couple of rushing touchdowns on the night for the Senators, and he gets a big-time interception there. What a play there from Deuce Williams and the Robinson Senators. Okay, let's check out nomination number tw number three, our final nomination. You got to watch this one close. So Mom Mill, Marshawn Wiley. Okay, it's a 20, 30-yard run. He pauses. The coaches are like, go, run, run. He's like, why do I run? Well, let's take another look at this. He was never down. He was never down. His knee never hit the ground. His elbow never hit the ground. I don't know if Wiley realized it, but some of their coaches did. They pointed him in him the right direction, and he ran this one all the way to the house. 85 yards to be exact. Let's take one more look at it in fast motion. Just flips right over the defender, pops right back up, waits a few seconds just to I don't know, catch his breath, and then races to the house. 80 plus yard touchdown for the score. So impressive play there. Lots of impressive plays for our sweetest plays of the week. Make sure to go out and vote thv11.com slash sweetest play and cast your vote. We only got two weeks left of regular season before playoffs start. We still got a few weeks left of sweetest plays. So that is very exciting. Okay, let's go to uh, towards the end of our, our show right now. Let's talk about the Simmons Big Championship. You're probably asking why am I talking about golf at this time? Well, it's because uh, there's a big time golf tournament for the very first time here in Little Rock. The first time a PGA Champions Tour event has happened in the state of Arkansas. It's a Simmons Bank Championship sponsored by Stevens. And that this was a really fun one at Pleasant Valley Country Club. Uh, two Arkansans got to play in this one, Ken Duke being one of them. He didn't have, actually one Arkansan only play, and it, it was Ken Duke. He didn't have the best of days, but he still played really well. Didn't end up getting the win. It was end up being Podrick Harrington, the guy from Ireland. Got his third tournament win of the year. It was a really cool experience for me to be out there and to see how the final few holes went down as Harrington ended up winning by, I think, two strokes. And uh, he was asked afterwards what was his favorite moment from the tournament, and here's his answer. Tapping in and 18 to win. <laughs> I think uh, I have enjoyed my week here. It's been very good. We uh, had good fun in the pro-ams. Uh, had a few days off in Little Rock at the start of the week, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we've been out dining out most nights. So, yeah, the whole week has been great. Uh, but it can't beat winning a tournament. Uh, you know, hitting the shots on, on 18. Uh, yeah, maybe hitting the drive down 18 was my favourite moment because I, I think I didn't allow myself the luxury of believing I won, but that, that really guaranteed the win. So, T shot in 18. Harrington get the win. Here's his putt. It was his eagle putt on 18. He was already pretty much going to win, and this pretty much sealed the deal. Rolls it right to the edge, and then just a few moments later, taps it in for the win to win the first, the inaugural Simmons Bank Championship. Special moment to see him win. That one loses the ball there, but still really exciting to see Harrington get the win at the Simmons Bank Championship. All right, let's check out some NFL scores 
from yesterday. Chiefs staying undefeated 27 20 win over the Raiders. The Texans, they move to 6 and 2 with a 23 20 win over the Colts. Bottom left corner of your screen. Now the Saints losing to the Chargers. They fall to 2 and 6. And the Falcons advance to 5 and 3. They're undefeated on the road with a 31 to 26 win over the Buccaneers. All right, two more things before we get you out of here. Arkansas soccer continues to be dominant. Five zip win over Ole Miss yesterday, and they end the regular season 13 1 and 2. One loss, two ties, 13 wins. Really impressive. They are one of the best teams in the SEC and one of the best teams in the country. Regular season is over. SEC tournament begins in a week, so that will be really exciting to watch the Arkansas soccer team go at it. Arkansas volleyball team struggling a little bit. They started out SEC play 4 and 0. They've now lost four straight. We'll keep an our eye on them because we know that squad is good, but but they haven't been great as of late, to be honest with you guys. So hopefully they can pick it back up and get it rolling because this is a team that was really good last year. I think made it to the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight. So hopefully they can make it back to that level going into next season. All right, final thing for you, a little Louie's look ahead. Hogs are playing Ole Miss this upcoming Saturday in football, I should add. 11 a.m. kickoff. This will be an exciting one against the Rebels. I'm really looking forward to it. Should be another exciting one at Razorback Stadium. But that's going to do it for Louie's look back, the sixth episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll hopefully see you guys next week.